So you get a new car. This is the next day and you want to join the community that surrounds these cars. You type up on Facebook and you find the group. You click join. You ask your first question and you get absolutely shit on by everybody in the community. Yeah, it's happened to me before. I guess they think as soon as you get the car, you're just supposed to know everything about it. Or you go up to a car you've always wanted and you just want to talk to them about their build and they straight up ignore you. And last but not least, you got the car communities that just want to straight pipe everything and want to do donuts as soon as they get to the car meet. Or they want to do a peel out. <laughs> Don't worry, Honda Civics, you didn't make the list. These are all examples of terrible fan bases. And while every car community has these amount of people in it, there's sometimes more people like this in one community than another. And in this video, we're gonna go over the top five worst car communities that I can think of off the top of my head. First on this list is someone that you hear so far down the road and you wait for that car to come. You keep on waiting and you keep on waiting and it takes damn near a whole 20 seconds for you to see them. And then you figure out it's a four cylinder or six cylinder Mustang. I swear, man, these cars are louder than any other car on the street. And I don't know why. If I bought a base model car, I would want to stay as quiet as possible. I would want to stay under the radar. But these Mustang owners, for whatever reason, just decide, okay, okay, I bought the base model car. It has a four-cylinder, six-cylinder in it. Let me straight Piper and literally rev it every stop sign. Holy crap. And it gets even worse. A lot of people in my town are college kids and man, they love to downshift an automatic car. And as soon as someone looks at them, they rev the crap out of it at a stop sign. They just need to keep their car stock, save up a little bit more money and buy a V8 Mustang. And to be clear, I'm not hating on y'all if you have an EcoBoost Mustang. Everybody's gotta start somewhere. But I don't want to hear your crappy EcoBoost that's straight piped and have a blow off valve coming down the road all the time. Because at the end of the day, I turn around and it just disappoints me. Second on this list is a car that pretty much I think almost everybody kind of wants in the back of their head. And that is a Mark IV Supra. But barely anybody can afford them nowadays. And because of that reason, these people have such a big ego. You try to go up to a Mark IV Supra owner, they won't talk to you unless you have a Mark IV Supra. And not only has that happened to me, I don't even own a Supra, but one of my buddies that I used to work with had a Mark III Supra. You'd think he'd be let into the club too. No! His car was a Mark III Supra with a 1JZ GTE in it from Japan. Sounds pretty super to me. Probably even better than a non-turbo automatic Mark IV Supra. But when he went to a Supra meet, more than half of the Mark IV Supra owners ignored him even though he owned a Supra himself. And so I'm guessing these people think that the only real Supra is the Mark IV Supra. If you have a Mark V, you're too new. If you have a Mark III, you're too old. And it's just really weird because the car is not even that good. I mean, the GTE six-speed manual Supras are pretty cool, but if you're getting an NA Auto, you just spent 40 grand on a car that's slow, it doesn't handle that well, looks all right, and the only reason why you bought it is to feel cool. And you didn't have enough money to buy the actual cool one, the GTE manual version. And this can also be said about the FD RX-7 and any Skyline. A lot of these dudes just have huge egos. For number three on this list, we got a car community that's even worse than the non-V8 Mustangs, and that is V-Cube owners. It could be a Nissan Altima Coupe, it could be a 350Z, a 370Z. Whatever it is, it's always straight piped with the Papa Bang tune, swerving through lanes, doing donuts, always being crazy. And if you don't see them coming, they will scare the living daylights out of you. You barely hear them coming up, and all of a sudden they come up to you, pop, pop, and you're like, holy, I honestly think sometimes they do it on purpose just to see people jump. Especially under a tunnel, oh my gosh, these guys go crazy. And although I do like myself a loud exhaust every once in a while, their two steps are insane. I feel like they're just the most rowdy group just because they're cheap, they're easy to drift, so a lot of them have a little bit of experience. And one search on the internet, you could probably find a pop and bang tune for this car because the aftermarket is just insane. And for those reasons, 350Zs are great. I just wish the exhaust note did not sound like a damn trumpet. For number four on this list, we've got any 3 Series BMW. The first owner bought the car brand new, did not care about maintenance because he knew he was gonna sell at 60,000 miles because BMWs are unreliable and next owner buys it and has a ton of problems he does not care about the problems he slaps a bn or a kbd body kit on it and just starts going to town on it <laughs> i mean i've seen so many of these people that barely make it to the car meet i've talked to some of them they're like yeah my head gasket's blown i barely made it here or it's leaking coolant like crazy but they will still do a burnout and do donuts in the parking lot and then still find a way to make it home these people just do not care and they usually have more than one too, just to keep that one running. And I do gotta say, I, I, I think they do look great, but these guys are just on a whole nother level of I don't care. And for the number fifth spot on this list isn't even a car, it's something you put on the car. If you've ever seen a guy pull up with real wheels, he acts like the most elite person there. 
No matter if it's a $2,000 Honda Civic with $4,000 work wheels, he will act like he just pulled up in a Bentley. Then he will go around to everybody else that has a more expensive car and shame them if they got fake wheels. And this has happened to me before. I caved into the peer pressure. I bought some SSRs for my 8.6, but man, these guys will go around and just throw shade at you. They'll be like, oh, nice car. Too bad you can't afford real wheels. It's like, come on, dude, they're wheels. Not everybody's got 5k to spend on a pair of wheels now, especially when your car back there is only a $2,000 car. It's crazy because they'll skip out on maintenance too. Their windows won't work, serpentine belts whining like crazy, but at least they got work wheels. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe down below and join the Discord if you're new and want to play some video games. 97.8 of y'all are not subscribed, so if you do, you're just doing me a big favor. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.